Hey, how you guys doing? Sandra Butler here in Detroit. Uh, excited to go live with you guys a little bit today. I usually go live with you on Fridays and I'll still be on tomorrow, but uh, had a moment here. And um, so I wanted to jump in and just kind of talk to you guys for a moment. Uh, as you're joining us, let me know where you're joining us from and hi to all those who are catching this a little bit later. This is the first live I'm doing from my office at our new spot, at our building uh, in downtown, in the midtown area of Detroit. So uh, excited to do that with you guys. We we're gonna get this place painted in a couple of days. So it's gonna look a little different. So right now it's just empty, but uh, I'm glad to be here working. Just finished putting our messes together and uh, just excited about the fact that in 10 days, we'll have our opening day experience here and uh, we're excited about it, man. We're excited about what God has done through FX Church starting on 9, 9, 18, and what he's doing on 3, 7, 21. And I noticed that 9 plus 9 equals 18. We kind of use that going into our new building or starting the church. And now 3 times 7 is 21. So <laughs> so, um, so excited about that. Uh, also excited about Bayer Now, the book that's uh, doing well. I'm just looking at it. People are buying it, and I'm hearing great great getting great feedback from people who've read the book and how it's helped them we're doing a bay or not group right now it's on clubhouse at eight o'clock tonight and also through our uh as a small group on zoom so if you want to do it on on zoom you can go to our website myfaithx.com and uh, you can find look for a group and you'll see bay or not uh, or once again you can just catch us on clubhouse tonight uh, but i'll be leading that we're going through the book we'll probably do chapters four and five tonight so excited about that. If you don't have the book, you can get it at andrebutler.com or amazon.com. So saying a lot. Uh, only other thing that I can mention, of course, is that we finished shooting the movie. We had our we wrapped the film. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we had to throw one or two more days in here at some point. But bottom line is uh, we are so excited to, to be done with the vast majority of, of the work there. And man, I have to tell you, I love the crew that we've had to the cast. They've been great. I'm looking forward to us celebrating together. Um, it's just been a it's been a joy just getting to know them and and uh, see them use their talents. And I think it's going to help a lot of people. Um, the movie is it's going to impact a lot of lives. So a lot of great things going on. I uh, just wanted to share those things with you. I got a little thought that I got from reading uh, the Bible a couple of days ago during our doing our daily Bible reading. I'm going to drop that on you in a minute. But let me say. What's up to Katrina and Tracy and Lillian and Felicia and Karen and Miss Aisha. Karen's in Texas, must be nice there. And Cy Turner from Southfield and Felicia and of course Clinton Township, okay. Lily from Akron. Hello, is that um, Brandy Gibson? Hello, good to connect with you. Tabby Cat, good to catch up with you as well. What's up Josh down there in Texas and Catherine and Shanika, thank you. Thank you, Latina. Faith for Life Dallas. That's right. Thank you. God's good. And um, so a lot of great things going on. So what do you guys want to talk about? I, I got about 10 minutes or so. I'm waiting for a vendor to come look at some things. We're trying to obviously get some signage up. Honestly, there's a lot of stuff we're trying to do to get ready for t 10 days from now. Uh, but I figured I had a moment so I can talk to him or talk to you guys and and then if he doesn't show up sometime soon, I'm going to get some lunch because I'm hungry. But <laughs> so, but thank you, Felicia. Thank you. So definitely excited about all of that. So what's on you guys' mind? Anything in particular you guys want to talk about at all for a few minutes? Anything? Uh, any prayer requests? Definitely we can pray with you about anything that you, any concerns or that you may have, anything you believe in God for. Hello, Heather Holt TV and Kevin. guys are quiet so let's give you a moment I, I i guess i'll jump into something real quickly uh we of course have a we're reading through the bible uh together as a church again this year and so there's a calendar that's on my instagram page and our, on my website and the church's website and the like uh, that you can you can jump in on any time and on monday we were at acts chapter 16 so 
Um, oh, there we go. Now there's a question. When's the red carpet event for the movie? Uh, we'll let you know. We are we're really taking this step by step. So uh, sure, I have some ideas of how we want to distribute it when we want to release it. But I literally just met with one of my producing partners yesterday, and we're really taking the position of okay, let's just let's go ahead and get through post production, and let's do you know our research on other distribution options. We know some basic things we can do. Uh, and we'll see what doors God opens. So I, I do fully expect the film to come out this year. And uh, right now, I would argue you're probably looking at early fall. It's my thought. But you never know. <laughs> you never know what God's going to do. You couldn't have told me six months ago I'd be sitting here doing a live. So, you know, it's one of those things. We know God said you ain't seen nothing yet. So God's got some things planned. Enjoy chicken nuggets with barbecue sauce. Actually sounds pretty good. <laughs> that might be the plan. There's a Chick-fil-A close to me, but it's in the hospital. I don't want to get up and go in through the hospital. Uh, so I may end up just doing a drive through or something. Uh, so anyway, I was trying to share. I was sharing real quickly about something I came across in Acts 16. And uh, it talks about Paul and Timothy. And it says in verse 1, Then came me to Derby and, and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman which was a Jewish and believed, but his father was a Greek, which was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. Him would Paul have to go forth with him and took and circumcised, circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters, for they knew all that his father was a Greek. And as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for to keep that were ordained to the apostles and the elders which, at, which were at Jerusalem, and so the churches were established in the faith, faith and increased in number daily. So here's what jumped out of me. I was open about Bible to read that Monday. Wasn't looking for something to share. I'm just reading my Bible, you know. And uh, man, it hit me like a ton of bricks. What kind of dedication is this? Think about it. Timothy was a grown man. And he allowed himself to be circumcised simply so he could travel and preach with Paul. That's some serious dedication as a grown man. And notice it wasn't because that's what he needed to do to be saved. It's not that's what he needed to do to be accepted by God. It was not a gospel requirement. And Paul knew that. And probably Timothy probably knew it as well. You didn't have to be circumcised at that point. Those days were over. Yet he still did it, and Paul still had him do it for the purpose of just being able to reach the people that reached the Jews. As the scripture says, he took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters. He did it for other people just because him being circumcised would remove a barrier to them actually hearing about Jesus, to them accepting his ministry. That's deep. That is serious dedication. Um, this is 1 Corinthians. I guess the first thing I thought was, I literally put this in my notes. I'm reading to you from my notes. What am I complaining about again? <laughs> so what am I complaining about? God said do this. God said do that. that. None of that. None of that compares to being circumcised just because somebody else might have a problem with who my father or my mother is. Wow. But they, he did that because he was yet committed to following God and God's plan for his life. But the second thing that's deep here is, this is actually really similar to what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9. To the Jews, I became as a Jew. To the Greeks, as a Greek. To those without Christ, uh, without law, as those without law. To those under law. In other words, I'm adapting. I'm adjusting how I present myself. I'm adapting how I minister, not in any way violating the law of Christ. I'm not going to go against God's word, but when it comes to customs and presentation and things along those lines, I'm going to do whatever it takes so that I can win some. And that was also something that jumped out of me about this. And I think it's the reason why, even as a church, we do ministry a little differently than traditional churches, because it's not about tradition. It's, not, it's about doing whatever it takes to reach people. And even if it's something as little as not wearing a suit or the type of music we listen to or our designs 
or you know some even those things we're, we're willing to make a change i've said it many many times i've been wearing a red nose while i preach like a clown help somebody get saved who wouldn't got to save otherwise i'll be willing to do it we want to remove barriers from people receiving Jesus. We want to make it as easy as possible. We want to do what it takes so that they can miss hell and go to heaven. And Paul understood that to the place, and Timothy did too, clearly, to the place of the man being, a grown man being circumcised just because it might help somebody else receive the truth about Jesus. So just a little nugget today that, that jumped out at me. I, I, I thought about it a couple of times and just made me think, man, we ought to be willing to sacrifice for God. We ought to be willing to sacrifice for others. Uh, make whatever adjustments we have to make as a pastor. I've said it when I pastored the last church, this church I pastor now. Man, it ain't about us. It ain't about us. It ain't about our preferences. It's not about, you know, uh, how it used to be. It's not even about, you know, the elders. Now, you honor the elders. You know, the Bible talks about that, but you don't, but the goal in life is not just to honor what they did. We can't live in the past. It's about reaching people now. And so, a couple of thoughts that jumped out at me about that. Maybe God can help you guys. Even when we talk about ourselves and what God's asking us to do and God's requiring us to do right now, you know, a lot of times it causes you to be uncomfortable. This whole process has been extremely uncomfortable for me. Uh, I paid a price for years to not be in this position, you know. Um, but this is what God required of me, Leave, you know, doing starting a church and starting from scratch and all the things I've gone through, and yet it's nothing compared to being circumcised, right? It, it's for the kingdom. It's for God. And trusting that God will take care of me, and he has, and he will continue to do so. And he'll do the same thing for you if you're willing to truly, truly give your life to him. Not your Sundays, not the things that you agree to give to him, not the things that are a little bit more comfortable, but your life in every single way. And you can trust him with your life. He'll, he'll, make, you, he'll make a mark in this world that can't be erased and God will bless you beyond whatever you could be blessed not only in this life but in the one to come so all right I just want to throw that out there you guys good afternoon Simply Sophia good to catch up with you and uh, Liz Karen we definitely want to pray for your son hmm. Father in Jesus name we pray that you do move on his behalf and protect him and give his mother wisdom show her your exit plan from this situation that he's in. And we pray you comfort him as well. We give you the praise and glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you, Lillian. Glad you enjoy our messages. Hey, Queen Esther and Glenda, thank you. And let's see, Tanya, Ivy, Mello, Angel, Uncle, Black. All right. Well, I hope this helped you guys. I feel like I was going to say something else. Um, I'm just talking. Look, can I throw something else out here real fast that might help somebody? Uh, something that's been in my heart. I, I shared this with our partners recently. Um, and that is, I'm definitely going to pray for him, for God's comfort for your friend from high school in Jesus' name. Uh, share it with them recently about, um, there's an opening in scripture where Jesus laid hands on a poor man. I'm sorry, a blind man. And the Bible says that when he took his hands off of him, he had him open his eyes. Okay, what do you see? And he said, I see men as trees walking. In other words, he could see something, which was a great improvement. But he couldn't see clearly yet. So then Jesus laid hands on him again, and he could see clearly. And something that God's been dealing with me about uh, is... I know for me in my life, I think it may apply to others, is that although God has done some good things, I'm still only seeing trees as men walking. That this isn't the it. This isn't the end. This isn't, well, this is as good as it gets. And honestly, the word of the Lord that God gave us for the year was, you ain't seen nothing yet. And it was built off of the fact that God did a lot of great things for us last year. But what's in my heart, maybe it's for somebody else, is that, man, God has done some things. God's moved. I was blind. Now I can see something. But I'm still not seeing everything he promised. And I will. And so will you. So if you feel like, is this it? You know, you're a little confused, a little frustrated. You know, yeah, this is better than it was, but it's not what I wanted. It's okay. Hang in there. God's got you. He's just not done yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. So, all right, I'm going to run. I think I am going to get some chicken nuggets and barbecue sauce. So, <laughs> But uh, first live from my office here at the spot at FX Church, our new location. 
I will catch up with you guys tomorrow. I don't know if I'll be here or at home because I have to teach the message and all of that. But uh, love you guys and know that God has a future for you.